Bot Lounge, and uh, Jake and I are in the studio today. Hey, Jake, how's it going? Going well. Good. Hi, Matt. Thanks for having me. Uh, it is good to be here, and we appreciate you uh, listening to us. And as always, we appreciate any comments, any uh, likes. Uh, we always appreciate a subscription. We appreciate it if you share this with someone that you know that might find it, find it beneficial. And once again, uh, we uh, appreciate you being here today. So uh, today we're going to talk about Joseph. And uh, so he's kind of been the topic uh, in our study, Torah studies, and uh, kind of wanted to start with the 12 tribes here. And so, Jake, will you read off? These are the 12 tribes in order. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, well, God, depending on how you want to pronounce that. Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. Very good. And so when you break these names down, now I'm sure there are various ways to do this uh, depending on uh, how you want to translate the Hebrew. But these are looking at the Hebrew meanings of the words in order. You can kind of come up with a sentence that kind of goes like this. We see a son, which is Yeshua. We hear from the son. Then we want to join with the Son. We acknowledge our own judgment that's coming. We acknowledge that, you know, there's things in us wrong that need uh, saving. And we wrestle with ourselves, just like Jacob wrestled with the, with the Father. We wrestle not only with ourselves, but with, with the Father and what He wants to do. And, and so eventually, hopefully, we uh, let Him win. And then when we do, we're joined to His family. And this leads us to joy in our obedience, the joy that comes from that. And as we gain wisdom, we continue to learn to do the work that's required. And and yes, we're not saying we're saved by works, but uh, to be obedient means we're doing the things he wants us to do. And yes, there's some things you have to do. Something involved. In yes, it, right? not a free pass. And then we find it our destiny to occupy, occupy the land, occupy in his kingdom, and and um, be the fruit we become the fruit that the father's added and we become uh, part and 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 join him you know as the son of the right hand it enables us to to be a part of of this uh, family if you will and so i just think that's kind of interesting looking at their names do you have anything to add there no i just think yeah it's interesting that you know nothing Nothing in the Bible really goes uh, without meaning, and uh, some of this stuff where you where you can find these these different patterns and and meanings is pretty cool. Um, clearly, each one had a name, and and from the beginning, you see that ever that people's names have a, a specific purpose. Uh, so I think pulling them together in one spot like this is is pretty neat to see. Yeah, yeah, and every time you see them. You know, putting those names together is telling some kind of a version of this kind of story, right? And uh, to us all, and uh, and it does get kind of lost when we just read the names. Right. Uh, we forget they they meant something, and because we don't talk like that, in, in, in our language, we just say Jake. We don't we don't say. By the way, what does Jake mean? I caught it you off means guard. The heel grabber, the supplanter. Oh, it's short for Jacob. Oh, yes, yes, sorry. yes, 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 I guess so. So um, that makes sense. And mine is gift of God, which is kind of weird to go around and go, yes, I'm the gift of God. It's a little presumptuous. <laughs> it, does seem, it does seem like it is. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't go around saying that. Well, in a previous podcast, you had mentioned how you try to you strive to be like Jacob. Yes. Well, yes. The striving is less difficult for me because I am Jacob. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's good. That's a good one. So I'm going to scroll on down. This was for something else that we did. And, I'm, I'm uh, like the name of Jacob and the face of Esau. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh huh. Well, that's perfect. Well, uh, in, in the course of our study, since we're still talking about um, jo Joseph here and. Um, kind of came up with all these natural comparisons to Yeshua. And so they both had miraculous births. So Jake, how did they both have miraculous births? Well, Joseph, you see, was born from a woman that could not bear children. 
And uh, Yeshua was born of a woman who could not have children because she did not participate in a <laughs> child-making act. Yes, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> very, uh, very clean. So, and they both were obedient. Family friendly. That's right. We're going to be family friendly. Family friendly here, right here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk, apparently. But uh, both were obedient to their fathers. And so they were both about their father's business. And uh, both of them have no, um, nothing written in Torah that they ever send. Right. And we know that Joseph had sinned because all have sinned. And Yeshua right. was the, the the pure lamb. Uh, but yeah, this was a good point that you brought up because it's not recorded anywhere that he sinned. And I think that um, there may be other folks in the Bible that don't record a sin, but the fact that Joseph in many other ways is a type of Yeshua that this is a poignant message that's added to the, to the, to that note. Yeah. We look at people like Moses, you know, Moses, you know, was a pretty amazing guy, but yes, there was very specific sin that is yeah. mentioned about him, kept him out of the promised land, but right. we don't have really any of that with Joseph. And like you said, I'm sure he did. It just, it did not record it. And, and so we also have in there that they are both rejected by their brothers. And or in Yeshua's case, you'd say his children rejected him. And they both had garments that were left behind. You know, with Yeshua, you could talk about the Shroud of Turin, the shroud that was in the tomb, you know, that gets left behind. And with Joseph, you know, his coat of colors, uh, well, that happens twice to Joseph. Once the coat of colors that they rip and, you know, dip in blood and go with that and, you know, first off, just the, can you imagine the tenacity, the, just the, I don't know if tenacity is the right word, but those brothers were so dark that they could do that to their father Yeah, and just watch him be crushed. For They're, like ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just like blatant, bold face go, you know, It never say like that. slipped out. No. Yeah. Don't worry, Dad. It's, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is crazy. Right, and we know that just – for the sake of of accuracy, we know the coat of colors was actually a coat of long sleeves, right? Right. So, just because that gets out there, the coat of coat of colors is how people assume it to be the Technicolor it's, dream coat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, it definitely was something that was different, and people would spot him, and it was a sign of royalty, right? And so he was like a prophet, priest, king kind of model yeah. in a lot of ways. And along with the shroud, right, both were left behind. Well, and then Joseph also left his uh, outer garment behind with Potiphar because he fleed from sexual immorality. Yes. He ran so fast he left some of his clothes with her. Right. So That's some um, fast running. I've never yes. ran out of my clothes before. No, no. And that was a <laughs> <I> strong <think> grip. <laughs> There's that was, different clothes, too. Yeah, and that whole story, you know, <laughs> that uh, we watched a little video that went with it, and it didn't really accurately portray it because she had a strong grip. You know, she was she was trying to get him to yeah. stay there with everything she had. So anyway, we're chasing that rabbit right now. But, yeah. but they both had uh, conspiracies, uh, and, and it's interesting, just in the names Judas and Judah. Right. Uh, both are involved in these stories, and 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 one is sold for twenty pieces of silver, and the and Yeshua is sold for thirty pieces of silver, which thirty pieces was commonly believed to be like a, a woman, um, the price of uh, of a of a woman, and the, the twenty pieces. I, I'm not sure uh, they're probably connected. I don't know. I'm sticking with inflation. Inflation, yes, yeah. that's a good point. So if anybody has anything to add there, I'd like to hear it. Maybe there's something there we're not seeing, but. And they both seem to go peacefully. You know, you don't read, the Torah doesn't say that Joseph, you know, went crazy and was flinging his fist everywhere and cussing at him. And struggling. Right? Yeah, it seems like he just kind of went, went along with it. And uh, so, but f for both Yeshua and Joseph, blood is shed and clothes are torn. They're both put in the ground. Uh, one was a well and one was a tomb. Uh, and they both were raised up. And so Joseph gets raised up and saved out of the well, and Yeshua gets raised up and rises out of the grave. Uh, they both were beaten. They both were stripped. They bo both were persecuted uh, for the sake of their people. And both, you could say, by their wounds, 
by Yeshua's wounds, we are healed. And uh, Joseph's brothers were healed through his wounds right. and, and saved. And uh, so we talked about the, the code of colors. And, and the other thing about it is, you know, Joseph, you know, kind of on paper, he's officially second in command. But in reality, he was in charge of everything. And uh, so if Joseph said it, it, it happened. It was law. The king, the Pharaoh, it was the same thing as a Pharaoh speaking. And that's kind of a similar pattern that we see with Yeshua is, is he is in charge of it all. And, uh, and, and, and yet he does submit to his, whatever his father wishes mm-hmm. uh, at the same time. He's, you know, he's kind of both and both the king in charge and uh, under someone. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And they both had in Joseph's dreams, all the dreams, if you go back and look at those, Yeshua is the ultimate fulfillment of all those dreams. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was really cool, too. And they both go away for a period of time to prepare a place for their family. Yeshua is preparing heaven for us, and Joseph had to go prepare. Unknowingly, but yeah. Mm -hmm. He had to go prepare the way to save his family. And, you know, he didn't know that's what he was doing, but that's what he ended up doing. And uh, both of them, um, the family around them, um, you know, repent and come back to their father. They're ashamed, and they realize the pain they've caused their father. It takes takes them a while in, in both cases to kind of get to that point. I don't know. Does that make sense on that? Yeah. And then um, both both brothers, Joseph's brothers and Yeshua's children, reject them. And, and they were both servant leaders. You know, Yeshua washing the feet, Joseph serving in under Pharaoh and being in prison. And you just see this whole line of servanthood yeah. that he had. And yet, leaders. Yes, leaders. <laughs> That's right. And both were elevated above others. Uh, and another interesting piece of this is the baker and butler um, that we read about that have the dreams. You know, one of them is um, gets killed. Which one is it that gets killed? It the, is the, the baker. The baker. The baker gets killed. And then the butler did not remember Joseph. You know, um, you know, he gets out of prison and he goes on about his happy, merry life and he never remembers Joseph helped give him peace of mind in this troubling event that happened to him. And it's kind of like the thief on the two thieves on the cross. And, and so, but the role gets reversed because in, in that story, Yeshua says, uh, you know, um, that today he'll be remember. Yeah. Right. That, that he'll remember. Yeah. Right. And, and then the other one, you know, here he is on the cross on his death bed, and he still, uh, he still doesn't get it. And yeah, it's like, yeah. if you're not going to get it at that point, hanging on a cross, you're probably not going to get it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, I thought that was a real interesting uh, tie-in, uh, Baker and Butler versus the thief on the, thieves mm-hmm, on the cross. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's definitely interesting. And then um, Joseph... Uh, prepared the bread of life for his family. You know, he harvested that, er, helped. He was in charge of dispensing the grain and and collecting it. And Yeshua is the bread of life. You know, there's definitely a, an interesting connection and tie in there. They both go to Egypt. Um, Joseph was the same. We kind of already talked about that. And and both were not recognized until the time was right. You know, there are several places in Scripture where Yeshua just flat out goes right through a crowd because it wasn't his time. And, uh, you, you know, and there are other times when he said, hey, don't tell anybody that I did that because yeah. he wasn't ready to be recognized for who he was. And, and, you, and Joseph definitely has that moment with his brothers where he hid hid himself on purpose and he waited till the right moment to reveal himself. But it definitely um, had an impact because of that. Uh, both were tempted to sin. Both rejected the sin. You know, like we talked about, Joseph, you know, not only does he reject it, he runs so fast, he leaves his clothes behind. He runs from it, right? Yes, he truly flees from it. Uh, both save their families by something and through something that seems like a terrible punishment at the time. And uh, to the enemy watching, it would look like, you know, that they've destroyed them. And uh, yet the, that wasn't true. 
both had families that did very little to help them. Um, and then at the very end, they get convicted and, uh, and you know, turn back to them. Right. Uh, they both were falsely accused. They both go basically before the king and both are silent. You know, you don't read a, about Joseph arguing much or, you right. know, Doesn't he seems to be real I humble. I think it specifically mentioned that he didn't argue back or anything like mm-hmm. that. Or at least that's definitely the impression you get. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, he definitely doesn't seem, come across as these the guys we watch in the NFL and the NBA that when every time the ref says something, they're like, well, what do you mean? I didn't do that. And the coach is like, what do you mean? He didn't do that. You know, definitely <laughs> yeah, opposite of that. that. Yeah. And, uh, and so they both, uh, the, you know, Joseph said at the right hand of the Pharaoh, uh, Yeshua sits at the right hand of the father. And um, in this Matthew 3 scripture where it says that the voice came from heaven and said, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. They both were loved by their father more than their other brothers. And, and, and I think a lot of times that story gets misrepresented and um, we look at it as a favoritism thing. And I'm not sure that it's a favoritism thing like I used to think. And, and I wonder if, if, uh, if Jacob loved Joseph more because of the kind of person Joseph was and because he had the heart of his father and he had the heart of, of Yahweh in his, in his being. And that was important to him. And that's why he, and the, you know, I think there's definitely some validity to thinking that way. Yeah. I know it's, it says that it's because, um, it was the son he was given in his old age, mm-hmm. but he was mm-hmm. also given Benjamin in his old age, and he didn't have this affinity for Benjamin. Right. Um, until Joseph was gone, kind of, mm-hmm. and then uh, – No. Yeah. But so there was more to it than that. Sure, maybe yeah. that's part of it, but there was more to it. Mm-hmm. And we know the whole story gets twisted because of polygamy mm-hmm. and, uh, you know – if you're out there listening and you're wondering, don't do polygamy. We don't <laughs> recommend it. I think the Bible is pretty clear. It causes lots of problems. Lots of trouble. Yeah. Yes. Just lots it of generational problems. Yeah. yeah. Never going to make everybody happy there. Well, I think that's about it unless you have anything else. But uh, I do challenge you to, uh, to to look at the Joseph being like Yeshua. Anything else, Jake? No, just uh... – like Matt always says, seek the scriptures, you know, be a Berean and go check these things out. Because uh, when uh, Matt brought these up to me, I thought it was real cool to see them all in one place like this. And uh, it's it's stuff that's uh, in our minds as obvious, but could you really find each one of these? And there's the challenge for you, right? Go find each one of the uh, verses to support this. Yes. Because uh, – I know I, I would love to share this with people and they're going to, they're going to ask you questions on it. Does it, is it really, is that really the a true connection? Mm-hmm. So yeah. you need to know where to find it. That's what it's saying. So that's right. Yeah. And just search it to see if it's true and you may come up with more. Yeah. This, this may not, you know, I, I would imagine there's more than, yeah, and how, than what I have here. Uh, so. You mentioned uh, why you kind of put this together, right? It was, it was kind of, because you saw some of these comparisons, and but mm, you d- hadn't seen any of them all like all together like this. Before. Yes, yes. I was thinking as I was uh, working on um, having uh, people in the house and thinking about this topic, I, I thought I'd Google an image and find some chart, and I didn't find it. Yeah, and that <laughs> that seems to happen a lot more than you'd think with the. The all-knowing Google doesn't tend to have all the answers. <laughs> right. Yeah, it doesn't. As much as uh, we kind of rely on it, sometimes it doesn't. So, well, if, anyway, we appreciate you listening, and um, and uh, as always, we ask that you would uh, give us a comment, a like, share this with someone, and uh, thank you for listening to Shabbat Lounge. <laughs>